Hey everyone, it's me, Arthur Cade. It's been an incredible year in the world of television, leading into one of the most competitive and highly anticipated Emmys of all time. The world of TV has changed both in what you're seeing and how you're able to see it. On this Behind the Velvet Rope Emmy special, we'll be bringing you up close and personal with all of your favorite Emmy nominees. Kicking off our special, we chat with the women who made you laugh, made you cry, but most of all, they made you think. Here are the female nominees in comedy and drama. Selena Meyer is such a unique character because, first of all, having a female character who achieves the height of politics yes. during this time is great. But playing her with such comedic flair, talk to me about inhabiting that character and bringing her to life. Well, I mean, it's a lot of it's a lot of work, but it's work that I love to do. Um, I understand her frustrations, and I sort of tap into my sort of inner child, narcissistic self to go to a nasty place with her. It's fun to do. Talk to me about saying goodbye to Parks and Rec. I was just talking to Adam Scott last week, and it looks like you guys had a lot of fun with that series. Yeah, it was an amazing time. I mean, we enjoyed every minute of it, never took it for granted, and um, I still talk to the cast all the time, and everybody's off doing great things, so it was a really amazing show. You and Jane together looks like comedy magic. What can people expect, and what was it like reuniting with our own That was great. That was totally wonderful. We're doing a series called Grace and Frankie. She's Grace, I'm Frankie, on uh, Netflix. It debuts May 8th, and... Uh, we're married to, I'm married to Sam Waterston, yeah. and she's married to Martin Sheen, and uh, she's kind of uptight and Republican, and I'm very bohemian, <laughs> and I'm a painter, and we don't like each other, and our husbands, who have been law partners for 40 years, they take us to dinner and tell us that they've been having an affair with each other <laughs> for 20 years, and they're going to divorce us because they can get married now and we're just devastated. It feels like every segment you're doing right now has a social message, has a social commentary, and people are really responding. Yeah. From the Cosby thing to the last day, which I love. Thank you. Talk to me about delivering those messages, because I think it's so cool. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's unexpected and really exciting. We're just, you know, we, we make the show that we want to make, and we know the message we want to send, and having so many people respond to it, it just feels like we're doing something right, and it feels very cool to have that recognized. Who knew that a character that sold drugs and went to jail for 17 years, <laughs> beat her son with a broom, would be an icon? America, what is wrong with you? <laughs> it's so uh, great um, for us to have the show, to, especially for it to have gone to Netflix and people to discover it there and be able to watch the whole season of 13 at once. It's been, it's been thrilling for us, uh, and I'm so happy for Ellie Kemper because she's just the sweetest, funniest, most talented, loveliest person. So I'm so excited for her and Titus Burgess to have this success. What an amazing lineup of incredible actresses so far. But guess what? There's even more. She lived a, a very full life in a really short amount of time. And so it was like trying to tell that story in, 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 with brevity was very difficult. But I mean, you're talking about a woman who can sing and tear the house down, a woman who is courageous, who was not afraid to fight for, for other people, fight against what was wrong, who was sometimes wrong herself in so many ways, but very vulnerable at the same time. So it was, there was a lot of different directions that I had to go to. Being a part of it was absolutely an honor to bring those amazing people back to life, for us to get a chance to see the richness and the trueness of their stories, and to work with a living legend like Queen Latifah. What you gonna say to that? You know, it's like a kid in a candy store, like, here she come, here she come. She was absolutely breathtaking. Is it crazy to see how much American Horror Story is still beloved and obsessed over by fans? I mean, I love it. I mean, God knows. There's nothing worse than being on a show that was once beloved and then becomes sort of this also ran. And so, having to look for a new job. And having to look for a new job. So I'll be on it as long. I mean, it'll be American Horror Story, Old Ladies in Space, and I'll still be doing it. So much of me is in all of my work, you know, and 
when people see it, I feel in some ways like they see me. I mean, obviously Nessa is very different from me and um, very different than Annie, who I'm playing now, who's also filled with tons of me. But I guess it's just, it feels nice to be seen. I think one of the strengths of our show is we often do episodes where we literally are talking about a, a contemporary issue in a very smart, well thought out way. And uh, the episode that I'm submitting for my Emmy was the, the wedding cake episode uh, and the gay marriage. And it was just one of the smartest episodes we've ever done. And it was all about being in an intellectual think tank with my going toe to toe with a Republican with whom I vehemently disagreed, but it was an intellectual, passionate, Argument. Nobody could do Amy the way you do it. Talk to me about inhibiting this character, bring her to life. Um, she, you know, <laughs> she's a control freak. She suppresses a lot of impulses. Um, sometimes, you know, people can tell that when I get a back rub. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, she's fun, and you know, she's 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 a, a study in. She's a study in, uh, in yeah, like like control and then not control. So it's it's kind of a balance. When you're able to portray two characters, one from Carmela to now Nurse Shaki, as an actress, having that type of material to chew your teeth and get into, as an actress, what is that like for you? Well, I you know I don't for a second forget how lucky I am, uh, how fortunate that I have had this opportunity, and how many actresses I know would want to be in this position. It's the end of an era for sure. It's the end of a huge part of my life. But at the same time, it's, you know, it's a good, it's a good thing, I think. It's, it's, it, you can't really do something like this forever and, and retain its quality, you know? And I think I would rather it remain good till the last drop than uh, be some, you know, you don't want to be the last one to leave the party. I think it's a real departure for network television, and I think it's really smart of Paul Lee and ABC to do it. Um, people aren't watching by brand anymore, they're watching by um, product, you know, whether it's on Amazon or Netflix or HBO or ABC. And I think John has created something that is true and raw and gripping. It's very, very nice and exciting to see people respond to the show the way they have. Uh, the people on the street coming up to me with tears in their eyes and, and, and literally throwing their arms around me and thanking me means more than the Hollywood accolades. But the Hollywood accolades are great too because it means we get to keep doing it. This year featured some groundbreaking performances in the actor category. We caught up with some of your favorites to talk about their starring roles. It's become a beacon for LGBT rights, and wow. the way people have responded yeah, thank you. is incredible. Talk to me about being part of a project that has such a powerful and exceptional message. Well, um, I always, when I, uh, I talk about the, Jill Soloway, I always thank her for the, the gift, but also the responsibility of Mora. Uh, and um, my acting teacher used to say, when you act, you have to act as if your life depends on it. But now I get to act because other lives depend on it. And so underneath the comedy and underneath all the, all the Pfefferman stuff, there's a very serious message here, and it's about freedom. And it's about, um, it's about the coolest job I've ever had. You're the golden child of the Rayburns, this very unique family that we get to see in this wonderful show, Bloodline. But there's a lot of similarities. Talk to me about putting this show together, because we see the dysfunctions, the secrets, and the craziness of, of this family in the Florida Keys. I don't know which question to answer that you just put out there, but um, Kessler's and Zellman wrote something really great, not so much about what the, just what the characters say, but it's what they don't say. Family, you know, family, everyone understands family. I can ask you, you know, think of three things that you don't talk about at your family, yourself personally, boom, you got them. Well, the, the thing about the Rayburn family is just that. It's like if you drop around, you drop around to pay the Rayburns a visit, you want to strap your seatbelt on <laughs> and just be prepared to be thrown around a bit on the ride. And people that drop around, they're not going to be sorry they did. The show is beloved both critically and commercially. It's got to be incredible to see the reaction. It is actually amazing. I mean, it's, 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 it's sort of weird because it's my first TV show in America, being a regular person. I mean, I'm a series regular. <laughs> I am a regular person. But it, so it is, uh, I have nothing to compare it to, but I'm, you know, I like it, you know, and I like hardly anything on TV. I don't even have cable at home because I think American television 
is sort of potentially so damaging to your health. And I, I really am so proud to be on this show. <laughs> it's so much fun. It, it really is. And it doesn't feel like work. And when you have such great writing uh, uh, that comes from Tina and Robert who knock it out of the park whenever they write a sentence, uh, it is just, it makes work uh, easy and it, and it makes you, um, you know, you just want to do the best you can. So it's just so much fun. From network television to cable to streaming services like Netflix and Amazon, there was no shortage of great television this year. Check out what the stars of your favorite nominated shows told us. Tina Fey and Robert Carlock created the show, and uh, I think people have responded to it for the most part pretty well, which is great. Um, it's a very upbeat show. I think it's a show full of hope. And it tackles a really difficult subject, which is uh, getting through something in the face of adversity and coming out on top. And, um, and that's what I think Kimmy is sort of uh, embodies the spirit of resilience and tenacity, and uh, they also managed to make the show very funny. Saying goodbye to Parks and Rec, yeah, a show that myself and millions of other people really loved. Yeah. What was that like? It was it was hard, but you know we're all in touch all the time. We we uh, we all miss each other and miss the show, but you know we all felt good about where the show ended. Felt like it was still great, and and uh, we we're still still making good shows. It seemed like the perfect time to end. You know, I feel so proud of the show and so proud of the women that work on it, but behind, you know, and this isn't this isn't just a trope. I mean, I, the people behind the camera and in front of the camera, it's so powerful. I mean, they're, they're, I'm so proud of them. I'm just so proud of my cast. I think they're so great. I, our fans for Orange are so hardcore, and I, I want this for them so badly. I wish we could premiere tomorrow so they could have been fiending for this show for about a year. It's amazing. I'm, I'm, Gingy Cohen was really interested in faith this third season and what we believe in. So there's this um, theme of sort of faith and um, belief that sort of go, um, permeates throughout this season. And Sophia has a wonderful um, storyline this season that I I can't wait to talk about. And I can't wait for everyone to see. She may or may not get into some conflict with another inmate um, and it's it, I had a really really good time and I didn't think it could get any better on Orange and it, it's gotten better for me. The love triangle yeah. forms talk to me about getting to work with Taylor, Laura, pretty good characters to jump in with. Yeah, Taylor Schilling, Laura Prepon, uh, Uzo, I mean there are so many people in this show that are so talented. The whole cast is just ridiculous. It's like on a whole entirely different level and working very closely with Taylor and Laura was um, a lot of fun. The most important thing that we can do in this country is to recognize when we are bigoted and when we are relating to someone else as the other. And we hold our own views as more important than our generosity towards someone else and their community. And I think this is what this moment is about. And I'm so proud to be part of Transparent because I think we're we're helping to make a difference in the world in a very big way. This show is only getting bigger and badder right now when you see the way people are reacting. I literally was on Twitter and I think it had like the top five trending spots. Isn't it incredible <laughs> to see something that you, the, your baby getting this type of love and attention? Uh, we had high expectations when we began working on this project five years ago, but I don't think any of us could have expected that uh, it would make the sort of worldwide impact that it has. And it just challenges us to uh, try, try to keep making making each season better than the last one. So, you know, hopefully people think season three is the best yet, and if we keep going, that, that will only improve. You get to play King Herod. Talk about a character to really sink your teeth into. Talk to me about playing one of the most famous biblical characters in history. Well, you know, it's funny. I didn't really think about him that way, and then I realized who I was playing. <laughs> uh, he disappears pretty early in the movie. So I thought, well, I'll just go do this, and it'll be fine. And, uh, but as it turns out, I think I opened the first act with a lot of, you know, style and power and fun. I think we're telling such a, a unique perspective of a very old story that's been told so many times. Um, not that it's ever a tired story, it's just an old story. The oldest story of all, in fact. So, um, I'm just so proud to be a part of it. We have the most stellar cast, stellar cast, uh, and I, you know, I get to play this amazing, complicated, very powerful, villainous woman. Talk to me about your feelings saying goodbye to this iconic franchise. Um, it's sad. 
It's very. I mean, it, I I had it was a great time working on the show. I became very close friends with everyone there. Who else? You know, I'll see them all, and I continue to see them all. But it 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 won't be the same. Um, and it was the best writing and production staff that I've ever worked with. And. Uh, cast and I got to direct and it was this great experience. It was such an iconic show and a great character and if if I'm only remembered for her in my career that I'm super happy with that I mean it's not often you're given something like that and um, I'm very nostalgic for it. This show, one of my favorite shows, I think it's one of the funniest, most original shows on television in so long. Talk to me about being part of it and working with the cast that you get to work with. Well, I mean, as I, I came from the theater background, so working with an ensemble like this is sort of a dream come true. I mean, just people that like, like Matt Walsh, who's one of the four founders of UCB, uh, uh, Armanu Iannucci, who has this long history of creating incredible comedy, and Julia, who is, I mean, she's a legend. I mean, like, she's a legend. She's the best comedic actress, possibly the best uh, comedian in history. So, like, that's that's a thing. Like, being able to just be around her is a thing. People have embraced this show. Yeah. Is it blowing you away to see the critical and commercial reaction to the show? Well, the truth is I'm a very neurotic person, so I don't read anything online because it'll hurt my feelings if it's <laughs> negative. And if it's positive, it just makes the negative things more credible when they inevitably come. So I have no idea what people are saying about it, but it's nice that they people seem it. that's good. And I'm glad people watch it. It's really a fun show to me. Better Call Saul. I mean, the writing on this thing so far. If I was such a big Breaking Bad fan, I couldn't wait. And the, the numbers, people are tuning in, being part of this show, it's got to be the most incredible experience. It's very nice. It's very nice. I don't, I don't like really think about that. So I just, I watch myself like this and make sure it's going okay. It makes sense. And it's a real person. That's all I really care about. But it really is nice that people are saying great things about it. And I'm, we're very proud of it. With the rise of reality television, Unscripted TV has become one of the newest additions to the Emmys. Check out what some of your favorite nominees had to say. <laughs> is it crazy to see how much Property Brothers has exploded? It's incredible. I'm, I'm amazed that people are still looking. This is f fading real fast, so we have to get it all in there. No, we, uh, we're excited. We just got nominated for our first Emmy, so that was That's incredible. Awesome, man. And uh, we're filming Property Brothers at Home 2. Property Brothers at home on the ranch right now, so we're making over. I grew up on a ranch, so one of our lifelong family friends, their ranch is in pretty bad disrepair, so I'm actually filming that as well as filming 25 episodes here in New York. Family business, how cool is it to be involved with the family and doing stuff like this? It's fantastic. It could be a recipe for disaster, but thankfully we're all on the same page and we're all really there to support Paul and his talents. You know, it's one thing to have our name on the marquee and that gets people to show up. But it's Paul's talent that keeps customers coming back, and that individual experience, the food is fantastic. So, One of the things I love is seeing not only the acting, but the producing part. It seems like this has really become passion for you. Talk to me about all the TV shows and movies, getting behind the camera and putting them together. I'm, I'm passionate about everything that I do. I give everything that I'm involved with 110%. You know, I'm, I'm not going to put my name on unless I can do everything to make it a success. But uh, I love working from home. Producing allows me to spend a lot more time at home with my wife and my kids. But, uh, you know... I love doing it all and I give it all, I, I give everything my all. It's awesome. It's awesome. I mean, just, you know, to even dream of even coming to Coney Island as kids was beyond anything we could fathom. And now to be here opening a business with our name on it, in an area that really needs it, you know, after Hurricane Sandy, this area, you know, it needs people to believe and to invest. And for a bunch of Boston boys to be ready to invest here, it, it's to have the opportunity to invest here, it's a real, real treat and an honor for us. And we hope to be side by side with Natans for the next decades to come, you know, um, you know, just treating Coney Island with the, the respect and honor that it deserves and making it a destination for the East Coast. Dancing with the Stars, what an incredible season. You and Nasi are killing it. Talk to me about this season and you've got to be happy with your partner. No, I'm very, very happy. but. You know, it was like very serendipitous. I mean, she's going to school at NYU, and there's no other way I could do a show unless I had somebody based in New York. So it just happened to work out, and uh, and honestly, I don't know who else would be able to handle it than her. You know, with the traveling back and forth and the limited amount of time. So it, it's a uh, it, it's a good partnership. We were, we worked out well. <laughs> when you see what that franchise has become, how long running it's been, how popular it still is, being part of that, talk to me about it. Right. Well, it's, it's great. It, it has it's our 13th season, and I think we're we're most proud of this the talent that's come out of the show, um, but also 
it has given me a platform to talk about things like hunger. And so that's what it's really done. It's, it's given me the ability to amplify my voice and use it for good. The dynamic with the three of you is just great. Talk to me about being part of the franchise. I, uh, again, it's, uh, listen, I, I did not had the chance to think about it when I first started because it was too fast. But then after I've seen what sort of platform it, it has put us on and you know what it has done for our business, what it has done uh, with, uh, with, with younger generations who are inspired to become real estate agents, and even if not real estate agents, uh, business people or, you know, it has, it, what I've seen about the show is that it's, it's inspired people to become better. It will be the greatest season ever. And we were, we were nominated for an Emmy this year. I mean, How there's awesome a lot going that? on. Yeah, I just came back from the Emmys. I was there, I guess, a couple weeks ago. It was nuts. We lost to Deadliest Catch, so I think this season I'm going to do an episode with a bunch of crabs, and it's going to be awesome, and we're going to win next year. From screaming at people on the street, to dissecting relevant social problems, to making millions of people laugh, these Emmy nominees brought the goods this year. Billy on the street, man, this thing's become a phenomenon. Now it's coming back to True TV. Talk to me about this thing. It's so original, so different. It has to be a blast running around and just getting people in New York. Thank you. Yeah, it uh, takes a lot of energy, uh, and it's great that people like it. We just announced our premiere for the next season, which will be October 8th on True TV. We got uh, Chris Pratt and Tina Fey and Will Ferrell and Anna Kendrick and Julianne Moore, and it's a great, great season. Portland is so great. This show, people really responded to it. Talk to me about it. You and Carrie do such a great job. Oh, thanks a lot. Um, it's something that we love to do. It's a labor of love, and it's, uh, it's like a uh, it's like an art project. Has it blown you away to see how much people have taken to the show, both critically and the the viewers? They're just driving in in droves. It's I don't really see it, to be honest. Like we, like I say, we like we finished the show last night, and then we're already thinking about the next one. So I'm not really exposed to it. Could be terrible for all I know. So I, I gather it's people, it's I gather. <laughs> your, chicken, your chicken segment last night was awesome, Pretty by the depressing. way. Pretty depressing, yeah. But it was awesome, it's yeah. stuff. And that's what's great about your show, you're touching on topics that I would never know that chicken farmers are pretty much all in poverty. <laughs> yeah, because it's, it's very easy not to give a about, as has been proven by the spectacular lack, lack of legislation to help them. So yeah, it was a pretty, that, like that story was like, is occasionally the case. It, you kind of got angrier and angrier the more you look at it because you realize that nobody cares about them. Nobody. SNL this season was unbelievable. Yeah, Talk yeah, to me it about it. Is. When you look back on 40, being part of the, the 40th year, how crazy? It's stupid. Yeah, it's stupid. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's really stupid. As stupid as the online commentary. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I spent years of my childhood watching that and now, yeah, it, this year was nuts. The 40th anniversary was one of the craziest nights of my life. It's just so amazing. Everyone's so great, and we got to um, celebrate the 40th this year, so it was just like a dream season. It was just so much fun. We're not done yet. Here's some more Emmy nominees that we had the pleasure of speaking with. Did you imagine with Lady Gaga that you would help her reinvent herself the way that it has? No, I, I, just, I just know a, when I hear a good singer, I know it right away. And, she is a fantastic artist all around. Beside how great she sings, she's a phenomenal, instinctive, creative person. And she's, she knows how to touch anything and turn it into glamour. She's a phenomenal performer and a, and a, and a phenomenal person. Saying goodbye to Glee, a, uh, an iconic show and one that defined a genre for uh, for today's youth. Talk to me about saying goodbye to it. Um, you know, we we had the luxury of knowing when it would end, which is what a lot of television shows don't have. So we had a lot of time to sort of mentally close, you know, close our brains to it. It was a wonderful experience, and it certainly got me to Broadway. Uh, so I have so much to be thankful for. But uh, yeah, we had a good run. I, it, it was it was very bittersweet. You know, it's like all good things must come to an end. I, I certainly wasn't running away from it, but I was. I felt good about it ending. I was like, we, we did, we did our, our job is done here. Did you imagine it would get this type of reaction? I hoped, <laughs> but I had really no idea that it was going to get that. And it's been extraordinary. I mean, the, the reaction has been fantastic. And honestly, I think there's been a lot of pent up curiosity about what goes on inside Scientology. But I think also Scientology has worked very hard to prevent films and articles from being shown or being written. And this was like an explosion. People could finally look 
and talk about it in ways that they seemingly weren't allowed to. When you get a partner like HBO behind a project like this, no one does documentaries better than HBO. Talk to me about HBO bringing this project to life. Well, they it was everything. It was everything. HBO did make it happen, and um, and Alex Gibney uh, uh, made it happen. He had the deal with HBO. We did not. And um, I think Alex, who's a wonderful, uh, wonderful documentarian, um, brought to it a certain. Um, I think. How do I put that? I think he had a certain objectivity to Frank and I think he was open to learn about him and he was able to at times listen to us say this is not good um, it's wrong and he would adjust when he when he knew we were right he doesn't take anybody's word for anything a I'm super scared about what's going on and B it's fascinating to see Edward Snowden is we never have seen him before we really had never seen him before talk to me about really telling this story both about this man, but also about one of the most relevant topics, which is the NSC security crisis. Well, sure. I mean, you know, he, I mean, this is a story both about the NSA, but I mean, really it's actually a story about somebody who put their life on the line um, to, to reveal information that he thought the public had a right to know. And so you're, you get to spend time with somebody who's basically risked everything, um, risked ever seeing his family again, maybe his freedom. And so you see it in the moment as it's happening, not somebody talking about it from the past. So it's pretty extraordinary. Well, folks, that's a wrap. Thanks so much for joining us for our Emmy special, and make sure to check out the Emmys on Sunday, September 20th on Fox.